We're asked to determine the values of a and b that will make the function continuous for all real numbers. We have a piecewise function with three pieces. If we take a look at the graphs of these two piecewise functions, notice on the left, we have a continuous piecewise function. We can sketch the function without lifting up our pencil, meaning the graph has no holes or breaks. However, on the right, we have a piecewise function with discontinuity because there are breaks or holes in the graph. Notice how there's a break at x equals negative two, as well as x equals positive two. So by analyzing these two graphs, notice how for a piecewise function to be continuous, the function values or y values must be the same where one piece stops and the next piece starts. For example, on the left, this occurs at x equals negative two, as well as x equals positive two. Even though one piece may end with an open point, the other piece starts with a closed point, making the graph continuous. So going back to our example, this indicates that two times e to the power of bx plus three a must equal ax plus b at x equals negative one, and ax plus b must equal b times natural log of the quantity x plus one plus two at x equals zero in order for the piecewise function to be continuous. So let's go ahead and set this up using the first and second function rule, two times e to the power of bx plus three a must equal ax plus b at x equals negative one and ax plus b must equal b natural log of the quantity x plus one plus two at x equals zero. If these two conditions are met, the piecewise function will be continuous. So let's begin with this first condition and substitute negative one for x. This gives us two times e to the power of b times negative one plus three a equals a times negative one plus b. And now to simplify, we have two e to the power of negative b plus three a equals negative a plus b. Let's combine the a terms by adding a to both sides of the equation. Simplifying, we have two times e to the power of negative b plus four a equals b. Notice this equation contains two unknowns, so we'll have to stop here and hopefully get some more information from the second equation. So going to the second condition, we will substitute zero for x, which gives us a times zero plus b equals b times natural log of the quantity zero plus one plus two. Simplifying, of course, a times zero is zero, giving us b equals, on the right, notice we have natural log one. Well, natural log one is equal to zero. For a quick review, remember natural log is log base e. The reason natural log one is zero is because e to the power of zero is equal to one. So if natural log one is zero, we have b times zero, which is zero, and we're left with b equals two. Well, now that we know b is equal to two, we can go back and find a from the first equation. The next step is to substitute two for b, which gives us two times e to the power of negative two plus four a equals two. Let's isolate four a by subtracting two e to the power of negative two on both sides which gives us four a equals two minus two e to the power of negative two. Divide both sides by four, we'll divide everything by four. Simplifying, we have a equals one half minus one half times e to the power of negative two. Writing this using positive exponents, we can move the e to the power of negative two down to the denominator and also write a in the form of one half minus one divided by the product of two and e squared. Either form would be acceptable. So using these values for a and b, the piecewise function would then be continuous. And let's go ahead and check this graphically. So here I've replaced a and b in the original problem with the values that we found, and the graph is shown on the right. Notice how the graph is continuous for all real numbers. We can sketch the graph without lifting up our pencil because there are no holes or breaks in the graph making the function continuous. I hope you found this helpful.